Good morning. Welcome. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we're just going to sing a little bit. We're going to be talking about the positive ministry of the Holy Spirit. And uh, first, though, we're going to sing some songs. Victory in Jesus. And the first scripture is 1 Corinthians 15, 57. It says, he gives us the victory. How? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, I heard an old, old story. verse. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame, he, how he made the lame to walk again, and cause the blind to see. And then I cried to Jesus, come and heal my through if you haven't heard it it's an awesome song based on second peter 1 4 he has given us his very great and precious promises that's why we're talking about the positive ministry of the holy spirit today but this is called standing on the promises i'm standing on the promises of god Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory to the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing We're standing on the promises of God shall prevail. 
songbook so I play it by ear but it is an awesome song and it's called count your blessings so I'm gonna just play what I recorded already and we can sing it together so there we go blessings name them one by one when upon my pillows you are tempest when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God Ron's going to come on and he's going to talk about the positive ministry of the Holy Spirit but that we are already blessed and so there's so many blessings we could be counting and uh, thank you Lord we just praise you today that you've already done and finished the work for us so here's Pastor Ron move next to me and I will just stay next to me there we go that was awesome praise Man, we get to have church anywhere we go. Amen. Amen. All the time. Oops. Put this kind of high, huh? Yeah. There we go. Oh, no, there you go. That's my wife. Much better. <laughs> so that was awesome. Awesome praise today. And we do this because we get to. And we get to worship our Lord. We get the benefit of worshiping God. That benefit is so our hearts can receive from Jesus. He has everything in store and waiting. And the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, without that, man, I don't know if I could survive in this world. Just um, uh, receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior, there's other giftings. And those giftings are produced by the dunamis power that he wants to put on the inside of every born-again believer. Remember, John the Baptist came so that they can repent from dead works. 
Jesus came when he got baptized by John to receive the gift of righteousness. So he changed the ministry there, but some people just stayed at John's baptism. Repent, repent, get saved, repent, get saved. And <clears throat> that's why John's ministry only took six months. It's because he had the mindset that everyone needed to repent. Matter of fact, he even asked um, uh, if Jesus was the one to come because he couldn't under, he was baptized in the Holy Spirit as a child, but he was going under harsh, harsh affliction. And he had to send his, his disciples down to ask him, are you the one to come? And <clears throat> so the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we do have a pamphlet in, in our back. Right in the back office. Yeah. And you can go there. Yeah, absolutely. It's www.newidme.com. And we'll put that up for you so you can receive your free gifts of not only um, receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there's other important staples of salvation um, that we need to stay on, on a constant. And there's other things that can be argued in trib, post-trib, if we're going to be raptured and stuff like that. Well, I know we're going to be, but <laughs> that's an argument for some. And But this you cannot, this, this, this is something that is not argumentative. And what it is that we need to receive what Jesus already provided in his finished work. Amen? So it's how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But we understand that you need to receive Jesus first. And he made it very simple to receive him. So simple that anyone can receive him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Let's focus on for God so loved the world. Jesus, when he rose from the dead on the third day, he and when he died, um, uh, and he told everyone they couldn't understand because yet they were not filled with this dunamis power, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So when he rose from the dead, he it was completed. He was going, to, it's better that I go, he said to his disciples, because he seen the condition of the world without the baptism and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. This is essential that you listen very closely because you can be duped even with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But then the word uh, comes alive. Paul needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit so he can learn what Jesus did. He started seeing in the Old Testament what Jesus accomplished through the prophets and the old books and what couldn't be accomplished that Jesus already come. It took him years. Matter of fact, he was the best student. And what he was learning, he wrote down in the book of Romans. He wrote to the Corinthians. I love the Philippian, uh, the Filipino church. <laughs> I love that church too. But um, <laughs> the, <laughs> the Philippian church. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, um, in that letter that he wrote to Titus, and man, it, it's a bunch of really good salvation issues that you need to stay on and stay focused on the righteousness of God and the, and the gifts that he provided already. When the day of Pentecost came in Acts chapter 2, 2, I'm pretty sure Peter ran into church that day. Because <laughs> he said, Jesus said on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, I'm going to meet you in Jerusalem. And this was the first time Peter met him on the shore. He needed so he needed change. He Peter knew he needed change. Man, he heard that rooster crow. He probably heard it crow all the way to church. <laughs> he betrayed Jesus. Amen. And you know, when when and he was a different person. Uh, before the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he was self-condemnating. He was, man, he was just down in the dumps. He was saved. 
He was with Jesus for three years watching signs, wonders, and miracles, and everything just dried up in an instant. But he said, meet me. And a hundred and I think there was probably a hundred and eighty that were supposed to show up. And some of them got deterred. Because that's what that's what Satan does in the laws of of uh of this earth. He'll try to he'll try to stop you instantly in your track so you don't receive the word of God. Stay tuned here. I got some important things to talk to you about. Some of the trials and some of the errors and some of the victories. Now, Peter, man, it's, it's great. He ran the church that day. And he said in Acts chapter 2, 2, you can turn there. Oh, okay. Okay. Actors, Acts chapter 2, 2, um, it's the day of Pentecost. It's the Resurrection Sunday. Come on. We always love the resurrection. We don't like the beating of Jesus, but it produced fruit. He took what we deserved. He took all sin. Acts what? Chapter 2, verse 2. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. She's my go-to. There you go. Yeah. She's my go-to. Acts go. chapter 2, 2. And this is it. And the day. And and when, well, I love the Word of God. Say it. I love, I love the, word, the of word of God. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord. You must be in one accord with expecting the miracles of Jesus Sorry. Christ. When you come together, expect right now to receive your miracles. Amen. What it's in the body, in the mind, in certain situations or financial. He does it all. How do I know? Man, I lived 35 years with the Holy Spirit. And sometimes he was trying to tell me certain things, but I had hardness of heart because I let the junk of the world come on in. And what you have to do is erase it with the word of God. And that's what worship does. Mm -hmm. That's what coming together does. If you don't have a church, a place, find a church that has, has the word of God um, and participate. If you don't, you can come here. We teach during the week. And this is the reason why. Good morning, Pastor Paul. Oh, and, good morning. And good morning, y'all. Good it's morning, It's good to have everyone. you aboard. So it's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I know Pastor Paul in Uganda, what he does. He waits for the Holy Spirit to tell him, and he plans out what village, what bush. There's no roads where he goes most of the time. That he'll cut through the bush and uh, <clears throat> and carry his equipment, have his people carry his equipment, and set it, and deliver that whole uh, voodoo village and unto Christ. It's wonderful, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The effects that this voodoo had on the people did not have the effects on Pastor Paul because he was praying in tongues, using the gifts of the Spirit, and walking in this dunamis power. The, actually, the devils shake, and they run. Here he comes! <laughs> Maybe we can stump him through a person. And if that person comes up, they actually have to sit down or they fall on the ground like a serpent and they crawl away just and you just want to deliver these people and so deliverance will be easy because of the fact you are filled with the holy spirit amen so and when they came in one accord on the day of pentecost suddenly Peter, remember, Peter ran the church that day. He needed a change. He needed a big change. Peter, Peter missed it big time. You can't miss it anymore but betraying the Messiah. And he never, Jesus never, even when he was cooking him fish, the fish that he got for him. Yeah, and he never mentioned it. That's why he was frustrated. Do you love me, Peter? How could you say you love somebody after betraying <laughs> He was only by the Spirit of, you know I love you, Lord. I can see him. But when he's after the conversation and the love that was pouring out of Jesus into all the seven, because there was only seven there at the time, do not miss the day of your visitation. That means when the Holy Spirit teaches you or tells you what to do or make sure you write it down. 
Do not harden your heart on the day that he speaks to you. And that's every day. And that's all the time. And he wants to speak to you most all the time. But, but be careful not to harden your heart. Because you can wax cold. And then five years later, you ask yourself, how did I end up here? Well, it's a process. The process is that you ignored the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you didn't do what the Word told you to do. Amen. Now, you get to read the Word. And you get to uh, identify it. It's not going, it's, it, you're saved. And it's not going to make you unsaved if you don't do it. But it's going to make you very stupid and stupid looking. How do I know that? I've made mistakes that are some pretty big mistakes. But I don't focus on the mistakes. I ran to church. And what I did was just like Peter did. And, it's, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a Russian mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Wow, that was the first time they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go to ask, seek, and knock, and I think that one is in Mark. We'll go here, yeah, right. and we'll go there, and we'll and we'll teach you how to receive the Holy Spirit very simply. Mm -hmm. Amen. It says this is very simple. I had them number it, one, two, and three in this pamphlet, so I could read it. This is so simple. It's simple to receive the Holy Spirit. It's it's not. It's so simple. It's like the thief on the cross saying, "Jesus, remember me this day. You didn't do anything wrong, but I deserve to be here. And remember me this day." He repented. He, the other guy was still cursing, right? <laughs> he might have made it. I don't know, but it didn't look like there was any evidence of him making it. So step one. Step one says, you can hold that one. And you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's your first requirement. You became a brand new creation, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. The next important step for, is, is for a victorious life is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. So make sure you pick up your pamphlet. So this way you can pull it to the side and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the, I mean, you have, if you invited Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he is living on the inside. To activate this dunamis power, you must receive the gifts that he left you. And when you're saved, you're going to heaven. That's not it. But you don't want to go to heaven with a little smoke coming off the top of your head. Amen. Amen. Some people, you'll just see that they're going down the wrong road and they're saved, but... There's no power there to release what what uh, this world has put, put upon them. Amen. The only power to release these things that come at us is dunamis power. The power of the Holy Spirit that resides on the inside of every born again believer. And 2 Corinthians 5.17 says you have a new nature and that nature is Christ. Your old nature, your sinful nature is dead. The only thing you could do is chase your flesh. Amen. But but you could turn around and say this. I will follow the word of God and not with my eyes, but with my heart. I will pray. See, when I pray in tongues, mm -hmm. my mind, I shut down my carnal thinking. Man, that's like, that's like, I have to eat that meal 20 times a day. 30, 40 times a day, I'll pray in tongues. And I'll pray in tongues everything I do and I'll catch myself praying in tongues. And man, I'm getting rest from all the anguish from the earth and that's trying to come upon me because today it can't penetrate unless I let it. So I'll pray in the spirit. It says in Jude chapter um, 20, it says that I pray in my most holy faith to keep myself in the love of God. That's why Peter needed to run the church to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. But after Peter was baptized in the Holy Spirit, that day, 5,000, he, was, he wasn't hiding no more. He went to the place where they crucified Jesus, right on the porch of Solomon, where they judged him in the, in the synagogue. And he went to that, imagine that. That next day, he was up in the upper room hiding. Mary, the woman, had to come knock on the door, say, hey, Peter, it's me. Jesus has risen. <laughs> and they were Just still scared. Dead. Who is this? <laughs> behind the locked door he has his hand on his sword 
Just what? Just, as, just he, as he said. He is risen. He ran all the way there. And seen that there was nobody in that tomb. But guess who did see? Him? Mary. And Mary. Mm -hmm. Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha? I believe it was Mary and Martha, yes, but Mary is. saw him stand, someone standing, and she thought it was the gardener. See, it's good to be a servant, and especially when he made women, he knows that they serve well. Amen. And he protects his women. Amen. So it comes down to um, praying in your most holy faith and how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, how to receive this gifting where you can hear things before they come, that he will remind you of certain things. He will teach you. He will comfort you, even in the midst of total chaos. That's how the, most of the Christians, I, I we know of some people that are driving food into the war zone, and they weren't affected. And they, and they got a flat tire in the middle of the night, <laughs> and there was no lights. For two and a half hours until somebody came and picked them up. Imagine the thoughts you'd have to pray in tongues just to keep those thoughts out and start commanding those things that are not as though they were. And it happens. Wow. 5,000 people got saved with Peter that same day. 5,000. They gave him a beating, but he was happy about it now. He says, I got it. I got the love of God. Jesus is living on the inside of me. No, silver and gold I don't have. He he loves me. That's he, right. he he cares for me. His whole life was dramatically changed when he was speaking in these tongues of fire, some of angels, some of dialect of other men. I'm speaking in dialect of other men. And they said you were praising God perfectly. Mm -hmm. I said, What do you mean? I I was saying I was praying in tongues with and this was, and I'm like, really? Hmm. And some other people come up, and and I watch other people sing in tongues and speak in tongues, and they said, God spoke to me there. And and uh, praise God, the power and the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to do good for others and to see them saved, healed, set free, and delivered. When you lay your hands on the sick, that's what he told you to do. You'll watch them recover. Imagine that. Knowing where you put your keys by just praying in tongues. That's right. Many times. Nowhere to invest. Nowhere not to go. Nowhere to go. You will know all things if you stay in the relationship and praying in tongues and reading the word of God. Staying away from strife. Because when your mind starts speaking, this is a, this is a clue. When your mind starts speaking, I've done this many times. <laughs> I start speaking what my mind is saying. And that's, that's not good. Because that's an unrenewed mind, unless I'm speaking the word of God. And if I'm strifing, man, it causes a whole lot of trouble. So it says in many words, there's sin. Amen. Amen. So what I do, what do we do? Is uh, put our hand over our mouth. It's kind of like Isaiah said, mm -hmm. you know, he like told them to put coal on his lips. Because he lived amongst people that weren't speaking right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So put a you know hand over your mouth. And sometimes you got to go. Say <laughs> la 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 shabdari yarabokoya. Yes, <laughs> yes. And it's, so, how do you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? We'll get there. Just hang out. We will get there. Therefore, I say unto you, whatever things you desire when you pray, believe you have received them, and it shall you shall have them. Mark eleven twenty three twenty four. Do you realize when you set, when you received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you had to speak out of your mouth and you believed in your heart that God rose Jesus from the dead and you were saved. And you know how he got there? He he When he rose from the dead, he gave Peter the grace. Do you think Peter needed grace? Do you think we need grace today? All of us do. And he gave Peter the faith by running, knowing that his Master loves him, no matter, no matter, no matter if he fell in the opposite plan of salvation. <laughs> Isn't it awesome that grace and peace can be multiplied to you, though? By the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So, what we have to realize, come on, that was good. Let's focus back on um, 
how to receive the baptism. Are you ready to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Man, when I first got saved, I wanted to. I saw my friend get baptized in the Holy Spirit. I was saved, and I was so happy that these devils could not really bother me no more. <laughs> so he was speaking in this unknown language, and I needed to speak in that language too also. Because when I saw him light up, I knew who he was. He wasn't he wasn't no nowhere near Peter. We weren't near Peter. We weren't chasing after the Lord. We were chasing after the flesh. And man, when we got saved, it was just like fireworks going off on a new day. Woo! And then it could get better, man. It got better. And when it got better is when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I just started speaking in tongues. Someone told me that I could do that. The pastor told me I could do that. And then uh, I saw uh, my friend raise his hands and, and he started speaking in tongues. And I was like, wow. And he's enjoying it. So I want the same thing. I know that I got saved. And man, there's got to be more to this. So I started speaking in tongues. And that's how easy it was. So, and, um, and, and he said the scripture. He said, for everyone, this is in, let's go into Matt 7, 8, or Luke eleven thirteen, Okay? And it says here, the word says, for everyone that asks, receives. That's what I did. I want what he has, Lord. And I started speaking in tongues. Man, it was a wonderful day. And I started learning about the benefits of the Holy Spirit. We'll get there right after we receive the Holy Spirit. For everyone that asks receives, and, and he that seeketh finds. And to him that knock, it shall be opened. Wow. If you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit, good things to them that ask him. There's the requirement. Did he say anything else? Did he say that you have to be good enough? Did he say that you, that you, um, all you have to do is ask. He already gave you the faith. You can receive this. He gave you the grace and the faith when you got saved. By grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It was a gift of God, at least no one should boast. Before you got saved, you got the grace and the faith so you could get saved. He opened the door up. All we had to do is walk through and confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, all you have to do is ask. Ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'll help you if you'd like. Just raise your hands right now where you're at. Amen. And say this. Father. Father. You said in your word. You said in your word. If I ask. If I ask. To be baptized in the Holy Spirit. To be baptized in the Holy Spirit. With the gifts of tongues. With the gifts of tongues. Just ask you. Just ask you. We ask you now. We ask you now. To baptize us. To baptize in us. In the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit. And with fire. And with fire. Now pray in tongues. Rabashe te ketoharo. These syllables will come out. Don't think about it. Your mind will shut you down. Pray in your spirit. And pray in tongues in your most holy faith. Rishato karababa boshene bokoniete. When you pray in tongues, your mind shuts down. No longer will you be thinking of your thoughts, but the Holy Spirit will undo you with power so you can stop the enemy's thoughts from hitting. So pray in the, your most holy face. Raise your hands up and take it, for you are a child of God. You are the righteousness of God. He made you. He prepared this worthiness, this holiness. You are holy because he is holy. He lives on the inside of you. Amen. 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 You see, this pamphlet here will tell you what happened to you today. And I'd like you to go to New Identity Ministries 
and it's everything is free there. We don't charge anything for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you like, you can also put it in your own language. And there's PDFs back there. Put your ministry on the back of these pamphlets. Read the pamphlets. They're discipleship pamphlets. If they read these pamphlets, they'll be on fire for God. If you teach these pamphlets to people, these are the basics of salvation, the basics of water baptism. But that's what Jesus is still teaching, the basics. And then you excel and do what he's taught you to do. He said, then the go pamphlet, the last pamphlet, after being saved, what happened when I received Jesus? That's one pamphlet. The next pamphlet is why water baptism? The next pamphlet is how to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then the go pamphlet. Mm -hmm. All four pamphlets, if you teach them at your Bible study, one at a time and have them study during the week in fellowship, guarantee the Holy Spirit going to watch over his word to perform it. We also have a free gift for you there that these pamphlets are in this free gift. It's a free book. Mm -hmm. It's called The Benefits of the Holy Spirit. Don't worry about it. Okay. They can go to the website and see the book. And and uh, it's called The Benefits of the Holy Spirit. It's not, and, and all these pamphlets are in there. You know, Andrew Walmack endorsed the book because he knows how important and because of all the people in the churches, he goes, that they neglect this gift. And you can't. Man, I, I couldn't live without the Holy Spirit right. and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Wow. He brings me to some great places. You know, he, And he does great things. He put us on a desert island. And we don't want to be rescued. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is good to us. Jesus is good to us. And we just need to mature in our relationship. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today. Um, my wife is going to play a little bit more. Make sure you share this with others if they need to receive from Jesus like everyone should. Make sure that your family hears on this and, and listens to this. Teach your children because you've only got a certain amount of time that your children is with you. And make sure that you teach them on a daily basis. Um, and it'll help them to go to bed earlier. <laughs> and it'll help you to remember because the teachers learn more than the students many times. Ooh. So it gets deeper into your heart the more you teach. Yeah. And the more you stay in the Word of God. Because then you realize that as long as you stay full of God, Amen. By being thankful and keep glorifying God as God, then you're going to be seeing everything He has already planned for you. Amen. So, we're going to play a different song. It's a fun song. How about, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Tis so, so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the same.
Have a beautiful day in Christ.